Today we'll learn about Bronsted-Lowry acid and base definitions. Bronsted is a Danish chemist and Lowry was an English chemist. Two people that never met each other and they actually really did not like each other either. So a uh, Bronsted-Lowry acid is, um, and a Bronsted-Lowry acid will donate an H plus ion or, uh, or it's just a proton. So a lot of times we'll just say that it donates a proton. And a bronze cell Lowry base is something that will accept that proton. That is the bare bones definition and you always should keep that in mind as we go through this. So as we uh, take a look at this, what if I showed you this molecule right here? Would you think it's an acid or a base? Most of you would think a base because it's an OH right here. You have, if you block out everything, it ends in OH, so it must be a base, right? Well, that's actually not true. It is an acid because if I draw this structure, we have, have it right here. We have the CH3, which is CH3 right here. We have the carbon, and we have the double bond to oxygen, single bond to oxygen, and then this hydrogen right here. This group right here is called the carboxylic acid group. And... Uh, some crazy things are going on where the electrons are pulling towards the carbon, and this bond is very, very, very weak right here. So this hydrogen can be easily given away. If the hydrogen is given away, we are left over with um, something else. So this hydrogen that's being given away to the solution is will make it an acid. So... Uh, you could probably wise up to my tricks now, but uh, do you think this is an acid or a base? Well, this is actually a base because if we look at its chemical structure or look at its Lewis dot structure, um, yeah, remember that, uh, remember your Vesper theory that this is a trigonal planar shape right here. So these lone pairs of electrons are really kind of separate and uh, they're going to, we have a high electron density that is um, on one side. So that electron is, those electrons are really going to attract a positive charge, right? So they're going to attract a proton. And that's why they'll pick up a proton and they, if they will accept a proton, then they are considered a base, okay? So uh, that is a broader definition and a better definition of an acid and base, rather than just seeing whatever it, um, if it contains a hydrogen or it contains a hydroxide. So uh, now there's something else uh, that's called an amphoteric substance. That is something that can act as an acid or a base, which means that it can give a proton or it can receive a proton. Now the best example of this is going to be water, and I'll show you that in a second. All right, so um, let's use this. Let's take a look at some examples. If we have here this, we have our acetic acid, CH3COOH, right here. Um, and it reacts with water. And remember, water, I said, was an amphoteric substance. It can act as an acid or a base. Well, what's going to happen is that this, this proton right here is going to be given to the water, and this water is going to receive it. So if the water receives it, it is going to be a Bronsted-Lowry base. And this is our Bronsted-Lowry acid. Now, the things on the right, what these things became this over here. So we have to dis determine what these things are. These things are called conjugates. Anything on the right is, is um, has a conjugate definition. So a conjugate, a Bronsted-Lowry acid will turn into a conjugate base. Now let me explain what, what I mean here. This Bronsted-Lowry acid has given away this proton to, to, to water and it has become this. It has become the conjugate base okay and here this water has received a proton so it has become h3o plus so it has become the conjugate acid well look 
H3O is an acid, right? We've talked about this. This is the hydronium. So this is the, uh, the acid. Well, guess what? Look, there's a double arrow right there. So this acid can actually give it back to the, the acid can give the proton back to the base and we can end up back where we started. But that is a lesson for another day. Right now, we just wanna be able to see the terms. What you are gonna try to do is you're gonna try to see which one looks the most uh, the similar, all right? This one looks like this one, and this one looks like this one. They are the correct pairs, okay? This is a pair, and this is a pair. Okay, the bond cell Lowry base and the conjugate acid base pair. So let's try another one. So if we have NH3 and H2O, now what's going to happen is the hydrogen is going to give the proton to NH3. So we'll end up with NH4 plus, and we'll end up with OH minus. Now the NH3 was our bronze to Lowry base. And the H2O was our bronze to Lowry acid. Now remember I said water can act like an acid or a base. Well, here are two very good uh, examples of that. So um, now what we can do is this bronze to Lowry base turned into the conjugate acid. And the bronsted Lowry acid turned into the conjugate base. Very good. So if we have H2SO4 and water. So uh, this is gonna be a strong acid right here. Let's just say that uh, this is our acid right here. We know it's an acid because it starts with H. So we know that it's going to give its proton away. And sulfuric acid is just an acid. So it just gives one proton. Let's only give one at a time. All right. So we'll say that it's HSO4. And since it lost a proton, okay, it lost a positive charge, it should have a negative charge. And then since H2O gained a positive charge, I messed that up, should be. It became H3O. It has an extra positive charge, so it's going to be H3O plus. The more positive one is always going to be your um, your acid, and the more negative one is always going to be your base. So this is my Bronsted-Lowry acid. This is my Bronsted-Lowry base. This is my conjugate base right here because this became this and this is my conjugate acid now let's try two more hcl plus um nh3 uh so now we're not just using water but i bet you you can figure out that this proton is being given away here and so we end up with Cl, and it lost a positive charge, so it should have a minus right here. And then NH3 gained a positive charge, so it'll be plus. Now the positive, uh, let's see, well, let's go ahead and identify this. The Bronsted-Lowry acid is right here, because it gives the proton, and the one that receives the proton is the Bronsted-Lowry base. And this one turned into this one, right? They look the most the same. So this is gonna be the conjugate base. This is gonna be the conjugate acid. Uh, one more. So we only have one proton. So big chance what you can do. Uh, try to write this out, see if you can get the, um, the charges the same though. Welcome back. All right, here we go. We have this. Now, a proton is given to here, and we have NO3 minus an HCO3 minus. Okay, 
So notice how there was a two minus on the left and there's a minus and a minus adds up to two minus on the right. So we're still okay. We have the Bronsted-Lowry acid, the Bronsted-Lowry base, the conjugate base, the acid became the conjugate base, and the base became the conjugate acid. Say that to yourself over and over again. All right, that's it. Have a great day.